avoiding gear up landings and gear collapses. According to insurance providers that we talk to, about 75% of gear up landings are pilot induced, either from straight up forgetting to put the gear down because they're fixated on something else, or they chose gear up during the rollout. From an insurance point of view, this category encompasses belly landings, gear failures, and gear collapses in both retractable and fixed gear aircraft. Knowing that 75% of these accidents are pilot induced means that most of these are preventable and we as pilots can have the greatest impact on the rate of occurrence because these happen a lot. One insurance provider we talked with said we average two gear up claims a week. Another said they saw nine claims in a single day. That's an outlier, but it's illustrative of how prevalent gear ups are. So let's take a look at how we can avoid these common and expensive claims. Fight distractions. There's a lot going on in the pattern, a lot to pay attention to. Run your pre-landing checks and then verify them by referencing the checklist. Set specific points in the pattern when you will conduct these checks, whether you use gumps or another one, and get in a routine of conducting them at those predetermined points every time. Check, then verify. Get established and configured early. Establishing yourself on a stabilized approach is key to preventing mishaps. Be sure to hit your target airspeeds, altitudes, configuration settings, and runway alignment. If you're struggling to get it slowed down for a landing, maybe your gear is still up. Most aircraft have a gear warning horn that sounds when you're below a certain power setting. But don't rely on hearing it to remind you. Ideally, your gear will be down, locked, and verified before you descend from traffic pattern altitude. Use your passengers. During your passenger briefing, Tell your passengers to look outside the window and verify they see a tire. If you're flying a low wing, show them the gear indicator lights. Explain to them, this is how it's supposed to look when we're about to land. If it doesn't, please let me know. If you find yourself at or below 500 feet above the ground and your landing gear is still up, we recommend that you conduct a go around. Reason being, at that altitude, your aircraft might not have enough time to extend the gear fully before touchdown. Protect that nose wheel. Set down on the mains first, let them take most of the impact. Then guide the nose down gently. This method ensures that the nose gear isn't exposed to any forces outside of its envelope, reduces the chance for gear collapse, and helps avoid a, another costly insurance claim, a prop strike. If you want more pointers on avoiding prop strikes, then watch a video we did on, well, exactly that. The link is in the description. Ground Ops. Don't reconfigure the airplane after landing until you're clear of the runway and have made a complete stop. There's probably nothing more embarrassing than raising the gear instead of the flaps. Pilots mistake the gear lever for the flaps lever more often than you want to believe. Squat switches don't always work, so take your time to carefully complete the engine startup checklist instead of rushing through it. And if your landing gear does fail to extend while landing, Congratulations! You're in the 25% where it's not pilot error, and you did save yourself a bit of embarrassment. But you still got a problem on your hands. First, instead of trying to land, you want to troubleshoot at a safe altitude. If your wheels still won't come down on their own, it's time to follow your aircraft's emergency gear extension checklist. Keep the engine running. Many people falsely believe you should shut down your engine prior to touching down. This incorrect reasoning has two schools of thought. One is to try to avoid a prop strike and save your engine from possibly getting damaged in a desperate attempt to avoid costly engine inspections. Luck isn't on your side already. Do you really think you're gonna get the prop to stop in that precise of an area? Just get it on the ground safely and leave the rest to your insurance provider. The second is to avoid a fire. Good thought, but luckily, statistically, fire is very unlikely. Plus, the engine comes in handy. It provides drag to slow you down. It provides power when you need it for a go around and it's what you're used to anyway. Don't complicate one emergency by adding another. Land on the pavement, not grass. Embrace the slide. 
It's better than a jarring abrupt stop in the dirt, or worse, forking into the dirt and flipping over violently. It'll also provide better access for emergency vehicles. Conduct a normal approach in landing. For more information on landing gear malfunctions and partial gear malfunctions, read Chapter 17 of the FAA's Airplane Flying Handbook. It provides good advice on the topic and addresses some factors you need to consider if you're ever faced with this problem. Plus, it's free. Gear up landings happen to pilots of all experience levels, regardless of certificates or hours flown in retractable gear aircraft, often as a result of complacency. Practicing gear failure simulations regularly can help keep your skills and your awareness sharp. Improving and maintaining our landing proficiency and procedures can help avoid costly accidents and claims. More importantly, it can keep you and your passengers safe.